Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hexjibber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi, welcome to my tutorial on how to create a bouncing ball animation in Flash. Now, I've had quite a few requests for some frame-by-frame -frame animation tutorials. And probably the most common one that gets taught is a bouncing ball animation, which looks like this. I based this on a guide I found on the internet, which looks like this. And you could easily find a guide like this by going to Google and typing in bouncing ball and doing an image search. And you can see there's lots of guides for you to use there. Now you could uh, use a guide from a book like The Animator's Survival Kit by Richard Williams, which is a great book on frame by frame animation and well worth checking out. And so what I've done is I've just copied and pasted that guide into my animation here on a guide layer, which I've called guide. And you can create a guide layer by right clicking and just going to guide there. And that just means that it won't show up in your final animation and it's easy to turn on and off. I've created a floor layer, which is just a stroke going across the screen like so to replicate the floor that's in my guide. And I've got a third layer called draw, which has my bouncing ball animation frames in it. So let's take a look at a blank version here. We've got exactly the same layers, except the draw layer is blank. And that's what we're going to fill in now. So let's grab our oval tool and go over to the first picture of a ball here. And we can hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. And that lets us draw out from the center. And if we hold down Shift, we'll make sure that we have a perfect circle. Now I've chosen to have a red fill and a black stroke so that our ball shows up really nice and clearly on this white background. I'll just turn the guide off there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to follow through frame by frame, matching up our animation to this guide. Now I've chosen to draw my ball with object drawing turned on. That just makes it a bit easier to move both the stroke and the fill around at the same time. So let's get cracking, matching this up to our guide. First thing we're going to do is go to frame 2 and press F6. And that creates a new keyframe with a copy of our ball shape in there. So I'm just going to move it over here. I'm going to do the same, go to frame 3, F6, just move it along here. You can see at the beginning of our animation that the frames are quite close together. This means that the ball is moving slowly. You can see later on, the frames get further and further apart, which means that our ball is going to be traveling much more quickly. So let's move on to our next frame, that's number four. I'm going to press F6, and move our ball down here. And you can see that it's still exactly the same shape as it has been in the first three frames. But as we move into frame five and press F6 again, you can see that the ball is stretching a little bit as it begins to move very quickly. This is a technique in animation that is called squash and stretch, and it simulates motion blur and creates a sense of movement in animation where there isn't actually a lens to capture these things. So as I move down, you can see that I'm going to need to change the size of this ball a little bit. So I'm going to go up to my free transform tool and I'm going to click on this very useful distort tool here. And if any of these seem unfamiliar, I recommend you check out my drawing tutorials on my website, hexjiver.com. And I can just use these to distort the shape of the ball so that it matches our guide there. Let's move on to frame 6. Press F6 again. I'm going to move that copy down here. I'm going to carry on using this distort function to match our ball up to this shape here. There we go. Just using the arrow keys to move it around a little bit there. So let's see what we've got so far. I'm just going to turn off the guide. Got a ball going down, 
it's gradually stretching out as it starts to move really quickly and hurtle towards the ground. So I'll turn the guide back on and we can move on to frame seven where the ball hits the floor. It's so going to move it down like this. Might rotate it a little bit. This is with the free transform tool. And I can squash it down. I can use the distort tool here to get it into the shape that I want. There we go. So it's going to splat it on the floor there. Let's move on to frame 8. I'm going to press F6 again. And I think to make life simpler, I'm going to copy the ball from this frame here. And I'm going to delete that one and paste this one in. I can just sort of rotate it a bit, put it in place, use the distort tool to squidge it down like that. There we go. So it's worth noting that as the ball falls down, it gradually stretches out and then it hits the floor and it squashes down. And then as it bounces up again, it kind of unstretches into its normal shape. And so it's a perfect circle up here at the top of this arc. It's also worth noting that as the ball falls down, it doesn't fall down in a straight line, it falls down along an arc, which gives us a much more realistic feel to our animation. So let's move on to this next one here. And by this frame, the balls become pretty much a perfect circle again. So to make my life easier, I'm going to skip back to a, a previous frame and just copy that ball there. So I'm going to press F6, delete that copy, I'm going to paste that kind of perfect circle back in there, just to speed this process up. Okay, so I'm going to press F6 again and move our ball up here and just carry this process on very quickly. I'm going to move it to the next one. I'm going to press F6 again, creating a new keyframe. I'm going to move it up to the top of this arc here. And you'll see that the top of this arc is a lot further down than the top of this one, because as the ball falls down, it gradually loses kinetic energy, so it doesn't bounce up to the same height that it fell from. Let's move on to the next frame. Press F6, creates a copy, which I can move. There we go, and again, and again, okay, there we go. So it's still perfect circle at this point, but in the next frame it's stretched out again. So let's press F6, move down to here, and we can use distort, stretch this out. So it needs to stretch up a bit, down a bit and squidge in a bit here. There we go. Let's move on to our next one. Press F6 again. Can move down. I'm going to click on distort again so I can distort the bouncing ball here. And this is another reason why it's good to use a fill and a stroke because your lines won't distort as you use the distort function. If you'd drawn this uh, stroke this outline with paintbrush, then we'd probably be getting quite a distorted looking outline at this stage. So, just like last time, I'm going to skip to the previous frame and make a copy of this one. Press F6, paste that in, and then I can probably just rotate it a little bit just with the free transform tool. There we go, and I'll make another copy of my perfect circle there. For the next frame, which you can see is very round. So I press F6, I'm going to delete that, paste my perfect circle into place. And so I'll just try and finish this next bit off pretty quickly. Press F6. And that's F6 again. I'm going to move it to the next stage. Click on the next frame, press F6, move it along. And again, next frame, press F6, move it along. And our next one's distorted. So I'm going to click on the next frame, press F6. 
pull the ball down, click on distort, and just pull it out here. There we go. Press F6, move it down, click on distort, and distort it like so. Okay, I'm going to press F6 again, and I'm going to skip back a frame to copy the stretched out one. Just paste that in there to make my life a little bit easier. Oops, a little bit of rotation. There we go. F6. And I think, just like I did before, I'm going to copy a uh, perfect one there, so I don't have to draw it out again. So I'm going to delete that one, paste it on in. Now, this is the, the part of the guide that becomes a little bit more difficult to read. So uh, I'll just go through the easy bits. Let's press F6 up to the top of the curve there. As it comes down, they're still perfect circles. There we go. One more there. Comes down to here. Now, if I press F6 again, just delete that. It's a little bit unclear which frame comes next. Is it the squished one or is it the perfect one? Well, if you think about it, in every other example we've got, as it falls down, as soon as it contacts the floor, it squishes. So this last perfect circle is the ball unsquishing after it's hit the floor and it's become stationary. So in fact, our next frame is the squidged one and our final one is the perfect circle at rest. So let's move it down. I'm gonna Squidge it like so, and then press F6 to create our final keyframe of our animation. And I'm going to copy a perfect one from the previous frame and delete the squidged one. And I'm going to paste that on in, just sync it up with the guide there. There we go. So let's turn our guide off and play our animation through. Very nice. That is a bouncing ball. And maybe I'll zoom out a little bit just to make sure I can play it at full speed. So there you go. That's a bouncing ball animation traveling along an arc using different timings to get the ball to travel at different speeds and also using squash and stretch to simulate motion blur and add more movement to our animation. And for the whole animation, we're keeping the same volume, so the ball itself doesn't get bigger or smaller, but it does squash and stretch as it moves through time. So why not download a template and have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, if you enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out the Hextuba Colouring and Activity book on my website, hextuba.com. It's suitable for kids and adults alike, and you can get it from Amazon, Play.com, and WH Smiths. Cheers.